Hello and welcome to another episode of Cancelled Games where we look at some of the unreleased games for a specific console. Today it's Microsoft's original Xbox which had a huge number of games that never saw a release. Some of these are multi-format having been also heading to PS2 and or PC but this is by no means a full list of Xbox's cancelled games. So let's take a look at 35 of those unreleased games. We'll start off with The Guardian, an adventure game with a very interesting gameplay concept being developed by WXP in 2002 and 2003 to be published by Capital Entertainment Group. I believe this was intended as an Xbox exclusive title. During the game's intro the player character dies in a rather severe car crash. Shortly thereafter you witness his soul leave his body and it's actually his ghost that you're controlling throughout the game. You interact with living people and there are also evil spirits or demons of some kind. I'm not sure what the objective of the game was, perhaps you were uncovering some kind of hidden truth, banishing these evil spirits from the earth or perhaps a combination of the two, or neither. This all sounds a bit murdered soul suspect doesn't it? But although there are clear parallels when it comes to the gameplay, The Guardian has one aspect that is certainly unique. Your ghost character has the ability to read the thoughts of the living and can then steal these thoughts and plant them in someone else's mind. So murdered soul suspect meets inception? I absolutely love this as a concept. This thought jacking would allow you to manipulate the characters into acting as you desire or to sway their judgement just enough to nudge them into reacting differently in a given situation. WXP developed a playable prototype to demonstrate this unique idea and it looks pretty good. Sadly, The Guardian was cancelled in late 2003 due to the publisher going under through lack of money. Another game that looks fantastic is The Bloody Magic, an RPG heading to the Xbox and PC, developed in 2003 by Skyfallen Entertainment. When they initially announced the game it was being developed for the PC first, with the Xbox version to follow later. The Bloody Magic would have had a different take on character classes, rather than having several character types like Warrior Mage etc, it would have had 12 different magic types. So all the selectable player characters were mages, but the game offered a variety of magic specialities. The story involves a search for an extremely angry dude. Formerly immortal but banished to earth as immortal, he's hell bent on destroying the world. This results in a moral gameplay choice as the player's character can either take him on or side with him in his sinister plan. The Bloody Magic's campaign would have had a heavy emphasis on combat and offered five difficulty levels. It would also have several multiplayer modes including co-op. Despite never making it to the Xbox, the game eventually saw release as Dawn of Magic on PC. Looking at the footage it does seem more suited to PC gaming with a mouse, but we've seen these kind of games work well on consoles too. A bit of an odd one here with a lot of speculation attached to the info, Storm Riders was an action game being developed for the Xbox very late in the console's lifespan and was based on a Korean comic book and film of the same name. It's all a bit of a mystery beyond that. A very primitive prototype was found on an Xbox dev kit and subsequently shared online by Assembler Games. There are rumours that it borrowed heavily from Ninja Gaiden in both its gameplay and assets, leading many to assume that Tecmo was somehow involved. A game called Storm Riders Online, an MMO, was developed by Phoenix Game Studio and seemingly the Xbox version of Storm Riders was found in a folder labelled Phoenix, so perhaps this was an early version of that, who knows. Whatever its origin, it has 360 degree epileptic fits. Nice. Project Velocity, also known as Octane, was a racing game being developed by Visual Science for the Xbox and possibly the PS2, which was intended to be published in 2005 by Sierra. A prototype was found on an old Xbox debug kit in 2007, leading to speculation that Project Velocity was an early prototype in the Need for Speed Underground series, although the prototype was dated early 2006, after the release of Need for Speed Underground 2. 
This prototype was passed to P2P Online and the footage of the gameplay shows that it's clearly a very early build with a terribly poor frame rate. Visual Science shut down in late 2006 so Project Velocity died with it. It does play very similarly to the Need for Speed series but nobody's sure where, if anywhere, it would have fit within the series. Hollow was a first person shooter in development for the Xbox from Zootfly in 2003. It was due for a 2005 release, so they had aspirations to release it on the Xbox 360 as well. The footage is murky as hell, but the gameplay looks pretty damn good to be fair. Set in a fictional state during a totalitarian regime, the story saw you play as a journalist who's framed for the murder of his fiance. Zootfly boasted four distinct environments, cutscene montages after each level showing the player's best actions, kind of a highlight reel, and a branching story that based its pathing on the player's choices throughout the game, which they refer to as a psychometric system. I'm not sure why Hollow was cancelled, but I'm pretty sure that they never found a publisher. Space Quest was being developed by Escape Factory for the Xbox and PS2 to be published by Sierra. A spin-off of sorts from the Space Quest series of graphic adventures from Sierra, this would have been an action-adventure platformer. Announced in February 2002, this was in development for around 18 months until its cancellation in 2003. Sierra even went as far as hinting at the development of a seventh Space Quest game, and even made a website. The levels will be accessed via a number of hubs, with the hub acting as the main level with a primary mission, and the offshoot levels accessed via these hubs containing the secondary objectives. The graphics look decent enough, and interestingly Space Quest was developed using the Unreal Engine, rather unusual for a platform game. Bizarrely, Sierra were adamant that this would be a Space Quest game in name only. The dev team were explicitly instructed not to even look at or play the original Space Quest games, so not only were they not to use the original assets or story, it shouldn't resemble a Space Quest game at all. This all seems a bit strange and concrete details on the concept are hard to find. Ultimately Sierra cut funding and scrapped the project, but the split between them and Escape Factory seems to have been a relatively pleasant one. Eon of Tears was a fantasy RPG being developed for the Xbox by Evolution with biblical themes. The main plot device was a biblical code which when decoded properly would grant a person great power. Your quest would take you to the ends of time quite literally including the creation and Armageddon, very old testament. The trailer footage even displays quotes from Genesis. During this journey you would complete various quests in order to obtain powers and knowledge and learn the quote, true meaning of the Bible. The graphics have a 3D style that reminds me of Little Big Adventure, and we can see that the game would have incorporated magic, swordplay, and several fantastical beasts. This would have had very adult themes and featured survival horror gameplay mechanics in addition to its RPG elements, which makes sense when you consider the source material. After all, the Bible does sit under the adult horror genre. The Unholy was a first person horror action adventure game being developed in 2000 and 2001 for the Xbox by Otherworlds Interactive. Initially announced for the PC back in 97, this then became an Xbox exclusive. The minute long footage of the engine's tech demo is sadly all we have to go on and it doesn't give much away. There's clearly a spiritual theme as hinted at by the name, and the game or at least this footage is very dark. They never found a publisher for Unholy, so it was scrapped. AI The Circuit, also known as AI Gladiator, was an arena fighter being developed by Radical Entertainment for the Xbox. This was to be published by Warner Brothers as part of a 2001 licensing deal with Microsoft, which would have brought three games based on Steven Spielberg's AI film to the Xbox. P2P Online found a playable prototype on an Xbox dev kit in 2009, so we can see that it was developed to a reasonable degree. Several fighters brawl it out on various small arenas, and there are up to four fighters which can be either player or computer controlled. The character select menu shows that at least nine characters would have been available. 
Looking at the gameplay, it actually seems to play more like a wrestling game than a traditional arena fighter. I have absolutely no idea how this all ties into Spielberg's film AI, as I've never actually seen it. In the end, all three planned AI tie-ins were cancelled. Seraphim was a fantasy third-person combat game being developed in 1999 and 2000 by Valkyrie Studios. This was primarily being made for PC, but they were also planning an Xbox port. You take control of a Seraphim, a fallen angel, which have magical powers and inhuman strength. Set in a fantasy world filled with fantastic beasts and rival angels, you would be tasked with various missions to complete including raiding settlements, assassinations, participating in huge battles with armies and more. By completing these missions you earn points and points mean prizes. Very much like the levelling up system in an RPG, you use these to upgrade your character's gear and abilities including better spells, weaponry and physical attributes. The success or failure of these missions and the choices made would also affect the overall story arc of the game. Valkyrie Studios created a playable prototype in 2000 and it shows a lot of promise. There's a clear ancient Greek slash Roman influence to the environment. Your Seraphim can fight both on the ground and in air and it looks like it could have potentially been a lot of fun. The game would have featured several multiplayer modes too including some mission based modes in addition to the usual suspects like deathmatch and capture the flag. An interesting concept here that was sadly cancelled when they couldn't secure a publisher. Dante was a third person firefighting action adventure game developed by Aces Studio in 2000 and 2001 before the release of the console. This was an early concept being created for the Xbox as Microsoft had expressed a desire for its studios to create unique gameplay experiences for its new console. Presumably it was named Dante after Dante's Inferno, as in the game you play as a firefighter called Jeremiah Dante. The game would be presented in a sort of mockumentary format, as Dante is being followed by cameras for a TV show as he puts out fires using his fancy gear. This gear included a hose that was a combination of water and lasers, bizarrely, to fight fires and a futuristic backpack that resembled a proton pack from Ghostbusters. Although admittedly it's a cool concept and certainly a unique one, I can see this being quite boring unless some other interesting mechanics were brought in. This footage is from a promotional concept video designed to demonstrate the idea. A prototype was greenlit by Microsoft, but it was cancelled before a playable prototype of Dante actually emerged. Fallen Kingdoms was an RPG being developed in 2004 and 2005 by Warthog and was heading to both PC and Xbox for a 2006 release. Set in the fictional land of Aegean, which has been overrun by dark forces, you set out to free the land from evil. The third person gameplay saw you completing quests, engaging in real time combat and of course levelling up your character. Fallen Kingdoms promised a rich 3D world, branching storylines and quests, numerous side quests and a quote morality system which would alter how NPCs reacted to you based on your actions, and this would also affect the game's main storyline. There was a magical element to the combat too, and the environment could also be burnt or frozen using fire and ice spells. Although the footage is a bit rough, we can see that Fallen Kingdoms would have had some nice graphical aspects like the lighting and elemental effects. Enemies would come in the form of undead creatures like skeletons and golems, led by the Wraith Lord who would presumably be the game's main antagonist. This was eventually cancelled because Tiger bought Warthog to develop exclusively for the Gizmondo before Tiger went bankrupt. The Core Gang is a fun looking platform game which I wasn't aware of until researching this video. If anyone has it or has played it please let me know if it's any good because it looks great. This originally began as an Xbox game created by Swedish studio Zoink which was founded by a former shiny entertainment employee. The Core Gang consists of three wacky characters, Pixie, Mad Boy and Rex, who use robotic suits created by a scientist called Core Suits. These enhance their abilities, 
helping them to take on the evil Crank Brothers, inhabitants of the Earth's core who, of course, intend to take over the world. The main gameplay mechanic is that you control any of the three characters at any time, switching between them to make use of their respective abilities to solve puzzles and complete tasks, very much like the Lost Vikings. In the end, the core gang had a 10 year development cycle, which saw the publishing rights change hands several times. When the concept was shifted to the Wii, the gameplay and the visuals were tweaked and some new features were added. Obviously this prototype Xbox footage isn't the best quality, but check out the Wii version if you're interested in seeing more. Interestingly, the Wii version has been very highly praised by critics, who said it's one of the Wii's best platformers, comparing it to Banjo-Kazooie, Crash, Rayman and even Mario Galaxy. This makes it all the more surprising that I've never come across it before. Objective Force Commander was a vehicular combat game being developed for the Xbox by Dynamic Animation Systems in 2002. Set not too far in the future, the game saw you take control of various off-road vehicles, all equipped with weaponry. As the name suggests, you would also be able to command vast numbers of vehicles by giving orders to the other AI-controlled vehicles. The story follows a group of rebels taking on an evil energy company and would have contained missions as well as several planned multiplayer and co-op modes of play. Despite being shown in a playable form at 2002's E3, Objective Force disappeared quietly, perhaps due to the lack of a publisher. BC was an action-adventure game being developed for the Xbox by Intrepid Computer Entertainment, formed by former Bullfrog employees working under the Lionhead Studios umbrella, which of course was itself established by Bullfrog's Peter Molyneux. In BC you would take on the role of the chief of a prehistoric tribe, guiding your tribe to develop technologically and eventually leading them to a peaceful valley devoid of dangers. These dangers come in the form of various things, but one is, you guessed it, dinosaurs. Despite man and dinosaur never coexisting by many millions of years, in BC they're all roaming the earth together. It was also stated by Lionhead that the dinosaurs in the final game would be of an exaggerated scale, i.e. much larger than you would expect. There were also saber-toothed tigers, rival tribes, dodos, probably the most realistic aspect of all this, and vicious ape men, which were presumably some kind of Neanderthal type creature. Although you're acting as the tribe's chief, you would actually be able to physically control any member of the tribe. There were some interesting gameplay aspects in the mix here, you would be able to capture and train animals, and there was even a complex food chain. Early comments on the demo build praised the game's visuals, but most of all its AI, which among other things saw animals interacting with each other independent of the player's involvement, for example hunting prey. BC was cancelled in late 2004, with Lionhead's Peter Molyneux stating that the project was perhaps a mite too ambitious, but didn't rule out the development resuming at a later date. Intrepid were effectively closed, and some of the development team moved over to Lionhead. City of the Dead, also known as George Romero's City of the Dead, was a horror first-person shooter being developed for the Xbox, PS2 and PC. I believe it was being developed by Kuju Entertainment. I know of all the games on this list, this is one that people were most looking forward to. The story was based on Romero's Dead series of zombie films. Announced in late 2004 and shown at E3 in 2005, it had a planned 2006 release date. Publisher Hip Interactive had struck a deal to develop several games based on the Dead series, including this, and video game adaptations of Dawn of the Dead and Night of the Living Dead. Set on a fictional island, a zombie outbreak occurs after a military experiment which was testing on corpses goes horribly awry. It's unclear how much involvement Romero or anyone from his team would have had with City of the Dead, but Tom Savini, who's done makeup and special effects for numerous horror films including the Dead series, would appear in the game as William McLean, a character that eventually becomes playable. Savini is a seasoned actor and stuntman too, appearing in many films over the years, you might remember him as Sex Machine in From Dust Till Dawn. 
The footage shown at E3 wasn't playable, but was described by attendees as being quite shockingly graphic with its blood and levels of violence. Sadly, City of the Dead was never released, and it's believed that this was due to Hip Interactive not having the necessary funds. True Fantasy Live Online was an MMORPG being developed for the Xbox by Level 5. Level 5 have a signature style when it comes to graphics, having made the Professor Layton and Nino Cooney games, and this is no exception. Although I'm not sold on the name True Fantasy, there's no arguing that the visual style is appealing. This is in development for a full two years before it was scrapped, and Microsoft even said that it was fully playable and almost finished by the time it was cancelled in 2004. True Fantasy would allow players to fully customise their character and then play in a huge online world containing up to 3,000 players. In typical MMO style, players could band together to go on adventures, complete quests and fight monsters. The trailer shows that there would have been a variety of environments, land and sea vehicles and even rideable beasts. Unfortunately for Level 5, the two year development process was rife with complications. Level 5 themselves had no prior experience with an MMO, so this brought about some issues, not the least of which being their struggle to implement voice chat into the game, which Microsoft were adamant should be included as it was a core feature of Xbox Live. It seems that Microsoft were quite demanding, and Level 5 was struggling to meet several of their demands, so relations grew rather strained as both parties became frustrated. In the end, Microsoft cancelled the game, and Level 5 has since claimed that Microsoft's inexperience with Japanese developers played a big part in this. According to them, when True Fantasy Live Online was cancelled, Microsoft and Level 5 were not exactly on good terms. Full Throttle Hell on Wheels is a cancelled Full Throttle sequel being developed by LucasArts for Xbox, PS2 and Windows. Just to clear up some possible confusion, there was another cancelled Full Throttle game called Full Throttle Payback, and there was also another cancelled game called Hell on Wheels which I covered in my PS2 episode, but this is an entirely different game. Announced in 2002, this had a planned Winter 2003 release date. An action adventure game, this entry in the series would switch things up a bit and focus more on the action and fighting aspects of the gameplay rather than be a traditional adventure game like the original. A demo and trailer was shown at E3 in 2003, but the graphical style didn't go down too well, let's be honest it isn't great, and the fact that Tim Schafer wasn't involved with this one probably doomed it from the start. LucasArts probably thought the same, as Full Throttle Hell on Wheels was cancelled in late 2003. Racer X was a racing game being developed by Boss Game Studios for the Xbox sometime between 2000 and 2002. They were most known for their driving games for the Nintendo 64, having developed Top Gear Rally, World Driver Championship and Stunt Racer 64 for the console. After the release of Stunt Racer 64 in 2000, they began work on Racer X. They wanted the game to be the best racing game to date. And in an IGN interview, the Boss Game Studio CEO said that Racer X was already running at 60 frames per second, had cars made from 25,000 polygons, and had some nice little touches when it came to the environmental physics, including leaves blowing around the tracks and detailed reflections. Although Racer X seemed to be coming along nicely, they couldn't secure a publisher, so they closed their doors in mid-2002. Loose Cannon was an open world sandbox action game being developed for the PC in 1999 and 2000 by Digital Anvil, but an Xbox port was also planned. The story takes place in 2016, set in cities all across the US, where law enforcement has stretched so thin they have to employ mercenaries and bounty hunters to catch criminals. You would play as one such mercenary, Ash, engaging in combat both on foot and in various vehicles. The press release for the game boasted a whole lot, realistic combat, ever-changing environments, 15 customizable vehicles, realistic traffic and stunning graphics, although the brief clip and screenshots don't do anything to prove that claim. Loose Cannon's story would have taken you to 9 different US cities including New York and LA, which Digital Anvil promised would be very detailed, 
and there would also be quote, visually stunning countryside between them. Players would be able to decide which missions they wanted to take on, and there would be an intricate overlapping mission structure. It would also have an online multiplayer mode supporting up to 8 players. Digital Anvil was bought by Microsoft in December of 2000, and they immediately sold the loose cannon concept to Ubisoft, who never released it. Vultures was a 3D beat-em-up being developed by CDV Software and was planned to come to Xbox in late 2003. The story is set in an alternate timeline in which a plague wiped out most of Europe. The remaining survivors fled to North America only to find themselves enslaved by the Native Americans and forced to participate in gladiatorial battles, bit of a strange concept but hey. It's sort of a 3D beat-em-up but in many ways plays like an arena fighter. You wield one of many medieval weapons such as swords, maces and axes and bash or hack your way through hordes of enemies. Ranged weapons can also be collected during play like crossbows and these are also often found on the bodies of fallen enemies. There are 25 arenas in which to play, each having its own traps and destructible environment and 16 gladiators with distinct abilities and fighting styles plus an additional 8 to unlock. The combat was compared to several games by the press, including Rune, Dynasty Warriors and Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. It does maintain that overall gladiatorial feel though, looking like Roman architecture and armour in a North American setting. Body parts in Vultures would be separated into distinct areas, allowing the player to target specific body parts for attack. This would allow the targeting of a weak point and even the dismemberment of an enemy's limbs. Two player versus and co-op modes would also feature, both locally and online. Despite some considerable interest, Vultures was never released. The Roots was an action-adventure RPG being developed for the Xbox and PC by Polish studio Tannhauser Gate to be published by Seneca Publishing. The only footage we have of this one is some early clips demonstrating some characters, artwork and particle effects. The roots would be set in the fictional land of Lorath, but details on the story are unclear. A prequel to this game called The Roots Gates of Chaos was released for Nokia's N-Gage, albeit with different gameplay and scaled down graphics, so that's a hint at what the plot may have entailed. In Gates of Chaos, you take on the role of a warrior hero, helping the Lady of Light take on the Demon Lord. The two are gods of some sort, and their respective armies are at war. These events take place a thousand years prior to those of the roots on Xbox and PC though, but it's safe to assume that it would have also had a fantasy setting involving deities. Various undisclosed issues arose around the game's development, which Seneca described only as serious issues, and they parted ways with Tannhauser Gate. Technomancer, full title Technomancer A Calc Fon Adventure, I think I'm pronouncing that right, which is a bit of a mouthful, was a third person action game in development from Cube Software for the Xbox, PS2, and PC, with Virgin Interactive Publishing. Development started as early as 1999, and this footage is from a playable prototype dated 2003. Development ended that year. This is an interesting one because Cube Software weren't game developers. They're known for their Q game engines, the first being released in 2001, and Q 2.0 in 2008. I'm afraid I know nothing about Technomancer beyond what's in the short footage, but the engine does look very good. Something went wrong during the game's development, but if nothing else, at least this could serve as a tech demo of sorts for companies wishing to use their engine. Another game for which we have shockingly poor footage is Johnny Drama, a stealth action game from Sierra being developed solely for the Xbox. You play as Johnny Drama, an actor come secret agent who's on a mission to thwart the evil plan of an insane doctor. Pretty much a goofy spoof of James Bond, this mixed the plot of an old spy film with some cartoon-like cel-shaded graphics. Johnny has a selection of gadgets at his disposal that would make even Q proud, including his default ray gun and a device to interfere with security cameras, as well as disguises to allow him to go incognito. He can take the clothes off of an unconscious enemy to assume their identity. 
As I said, the gameplay focused heavily on stealth, but would also incorporate puzzle solving elements and exploration, as well as driving. Johnny would be able to pilot several vehicles, including a motorbike, golf cart, tank and a flying saucer. There would also be a multiplayer versus mode. Johnny Drama received a lot of positive feedback at E3, and was originally slated for a late 2001 release. Sierra decided to change up the gameplay elements a bit which resulted in a delay. The cell shaded cartoony visual style and characters weren't to change, although Sierra didn't rule this out as a result of implementing the new gameplay style. Johnny Drama was obviously never released in the end, which is a surprise considering how much faith Sierra seemed to have in the project. Black Nine was a third person action adventure game being developed for the Xbox and PC by Tauldron and to be published by Majesco. Set in 2080, Earth has become part of a society made up of many planets. The world's governments are powerless and instead all the power is held by nine cartels known collectively as the Illuminati. So just like 2019. This is where Black Nine gets its title. You're a mercenary working for this evil consortium and can select your character from a choice of four. The nine cartels are of various origins, be them religious organisations or huge technology companies, and you take on missions for each. Gameplay would focus heavily on combat and stealth, with opportunities to upgrade and customise your character's skills and weaponry. During missions you would unlock new gear, skills and combat techniques, but also learn a lot about the companies for whom you're working. This would lead to some moral choices going forward, as you decide who you do and don't want to be working with. Gear available includes some cool futuristic gadgets, including a wing pack which allowed you to fly. Black Nine takes place in futuristic Asian cities as well as extraterrestrial locations. Developed using the Unreal Engine, they promised exotic scenery, and Black Nine reportedly looked pretty good visually. Enemy types would be quite varied and the game would afford the player some freedom in how they wanted to tackle missions. There would also be multiplayer modes including co-op. Black Nine was due to release in 2003, but Majesco closed the studio when the game was around 85% complete, most likely due to financial trouble. Legend of the Sun was an RPG being developed by Dreamforge Entertainment. I read that they planned to self-publish this on the Xbox in 2007, but seeing as they closed around 2001, something doesn't add up there. The game stars some kind of samurai inspired character, and the characters themes and environments were heavily influenced by eastern culture and history. Gameplay would take place in open areas above ground and beneath it, in huge maze like structures. Dreamforge promised that this role playing game would have had a complex skill tree to level up your character, and an unfolding storyline with some twists and turns. Whatever the story behind who was developing Legend of the Sun and when, it was cancelled before release. This one goes by a few names, Snake Plissken's Escape, Snake Plissken's First Escape and Snake Plissken Chronicles. This was a third person action game based on John Carpenter's films Escape from LA and Escape from New York, which starred Snake Plissken, played by Kurt Russell. This was being developed for the Xbox and PS2 by Namco Home Tech in 2003. A playable demo of the game was created and some footage was shared online, as well as some pretty cool storyboards and concept art. The storyboards were drawn by Chris Warner, an artist for Dark Horse Comics with an extensive CV, having worked on several of their comics including Terminator and Alien vs Predator, and had done work for Marvel and DC previously. In fact, the team sounds pretty awesome on the whole, with even Carpenter being closely involved with the game's development. The story had been fully written out and storyboarded, as I said by Chris Warner, and was approved by Carpenter. So this all seemed terribly promising, but the game was never released. Perhaps Namco thought the IP was too obscure. The Escape films were released in 1981 and 1996, so by 2003 even they hadn't been around for a while. Despite their cult status, they weren't exactly the most profitable films. Actually, 96's Escape from LA was quite the opposite, having had a budget of 50 million and pulling in half that at the box office. I'm guessing here, 
but I'd imagine that that was the reason that Snake Plissken's escape was cancelled. Jet Sprint MX was a boat racing game being developed exclusively for the Xbox in 2001 by Funcom Dublin. I'm afraid there's no footage of this one, I could only find these images on IGN. Jet Sprint Racing, also known as Sprint Boat Racing, involves racing these little mental fast jet boats through channels of shallow water. Funcom aimed to bring the spirit of this sport to the game with a significant sense of speed, real-time commentary and reportedly very impressive water physics. Races would take place across the globe in locations including Miami and New Zealand. There would be two gameplay modes, Arcade and Career, with the latter boasting 27 boats and 3 racing classes. Multiplayer would also be an option, although only local split-screen competitive play was confirmed by Funcom. Despite there being only screenshots, the visual quality of the game stirred up quite a bit of interest among the media. Jet Sprint MX was due for release in 2002, but Funcom closed the Dublin studio and ceased all Xbox development in favour of online PC games, so it was cancelled. Another game that was being developed by Dreamforge Entertainment at the same time as Legend of the Sun was Kel Fury Unbound, again an Xbox exclusive. An action adventure game set in space, the game starred the titular Kel, a huntress trapped within an alien infested living spaceship. The combat would be primarily melee, with a wide variety of alien creatures to take on. Each species would exhibit distinct behaviours and with that, unique attack patterns. Some creatures would hunt in packs for example, and some would attack both humans and other creatures indiscriminately. Despite the weaponry being exclusively melee, some of the weapons looked pretty interesting and unique. There would be a skill based levelling system, upgrading your abilities as you progress and I assume your weaponry too. Presumably Kel suffered a similar fate to Legend of the Sun and was never released. Shining Law was a planned precursor to the more well-known Shining Law Online, which was an MMORPG for the Xbox and PC that was also cancelled, being developed by NCSoft. Shining Law was to be a dating RPG, whatever the hell that means. This was due for release on Xbox and PC around 99-2000 and Shining Lore Online was due for release in 2003. The two games shared some assets, for example many of their characters were carried over, but the gameplay was changed to an MMO and the plot was reworked. In its original incarnation it would have featured some dice based mini games similar to those in Mario Party. A beta was developed but was reportedly very unbalanced, but Shining Law was eventually cancelled. Interestingly, the soundtrack from a seasoned composer who famously composed for the Luna and Grandia series was completely finished, but the game never saw the light of day. Call of the Dragonfly was an action adventure game from Lost Boys Games being developed for several platforms, including of course, the Xbox. You'd play as a female covert agent, tasked with investigating a tech company suspected of kidnapping some British scientists. During the mission, she's infected by an experimental nanovirus which grants her special powers. As the gameplay indicates, the gameplay focuses heavily on stealth, with the player being able to adjust the camera angle to best suit the situation. The use of her special powers is also demonstrated, and interactive environmental elements would play a big part too. Being stealthy doesn't mean you can dawdle though, as the nanovirus, in addition to giving her powers, has caused her to slowly die. So it's a race against time to solve the mystery of the abducted scientists and find a cure. Call of the Dragonfly was due for release in 2002, but never appeared. Toon Army was a first person action shooter being developed by Brat Designs. Set in World War II, you control these little chibi-esque soldiers with big ass heads. Quite simple really, you use an army of soldiers and vehicles to take on the bad guys of World War II across two campaigns, Europe and Africa, in single or multiplayer mode supporting up to 32 human or computer players. 
There would be several terrain types with interactive environments, detailed interiors and fully destructible buildings. The developers also promised varied weather conditions, advanced AI and a wide selection of weapons and vehicles to use including tanks and other land, air and sea vehicles. The graphical style is quite cartoony, but Toonami's characters would be rude and a bit cheeky with their banter. For some reason, it was cancelled. Duality was a stealth action RPG being developed by Trilobite Graphics, planned to be published by Fantagram Interactive on Xbox and PC in late 2002. Set in the future, the plot follows a theme we've heard before on this list, some technological advances have resulted in an all-powerful corporation taking over. The more unique aspect of the game is that you would control three separate characters in total, each with their own skill set. The mercenary, who Fantagram equated to a character from Metal Gear Solid. The mercenary uses advanced tech and weaponry to infiltrate and assault rival corporations and is awarded money for completing these missions which can be spent on upgraded gear and augmentations. The hacker has weaponry and traps, but they're far less aggressive or sophisticated than the mercs. Her job is, as her name suggests, to hack into systems. And the virtual being, a character without physical form who can manipulate the environment like Neo in the Matrix. This virtual aspect is where duality gets its name. The game takes place in both the real world and in cyberspace. Interestingly, although you would take control of all three characters at points in the game, they would in no way be affiliated and would even view the other two as enemies. Their seemingly individual stories would overlap and intertwine as the story progressed. I'm not sure how far they got with the development before it was cancelled, but the graphics and lighting effects certainly look impressive. Creature Conflict The Clan Wars was a planned turn-based strategy game being developed by Mythis Entertainment. The game seems very similar to the PlayStation's Hogs of War, which if you haven't played it is similar to a 3D Worms game. You control one of several cartoony animals using various weapons and tools to blast your rivals on various small planets. Because of this planet-based nature of the levels, the play areas are continuous and have no edges. The specific planet's gravity and the wind speed have to be taken into account when firing projectile weapons, much like adjusting for wind speed in worms. Power-ups would be littered throughout the levels, as well as gold, which would act as in-game currency to be spent between levels on upgrades and new weapons. Unusually for a game of this type, the player's character would also level up and become more skillful with each level completed. The developers were clearly going for a comedic vibe here, because in the E3 trailer from 2004 they put the word hilarious on screen twice, and then drove it home with a really funny game. The graphics are 3D with destructible environments and a cell shaded style for the characters. Creature Conflict was released for PC in 2005, a European exclusive, but the Xbox port is thought to have been abandoned quite early on. The Y Project was an action-adventure game being developed by Westka Interactive. The game ran on the Unreal Engine, but was using some new technology being developed by Westka in conjunction with Epic Games. Although billed as a first-person shooter, the demo footage doesn't suggest that's the case at all. It's angled mostly from a third-person viewpoint. It seems that this was more to show off the graphical capabilities, detailed surfaces and the lighting and shadow effects. The story sees humans at war with a colony of mutant bugs, with two human groups involved, the military and a band of scientists. You work with both, and although they have a common enemy in the bugs, at the same time they're at odds with each other. Missions can be accepted and completed for either side, and your choices of which tasks to take on will affect your relationships and the game's plot. The developers promised some inventive weapon types with 60 weapons to use overall. These included a weapon that would burrow into an enemy, and one that did them no harm but simply slowed their movement down. In the end, despite a publisher having signed a letter of intent to release the Y project, Westka ran out of money and had to close the studio.
So that was 35 of the Xbox's many cancelled games. Let me know if any of them piqued your interest, and as always, thank you very much for watching. You can find the other episodes in my cancelled game series in this playlist.